Uh, we actually caught something. Doesn't feel all that great. Got him real low. Very low in the water column. Yeah, another fast runner. Beneaters, tuners, ah, tuna. Well, do I want a tuna? Debating. I actually want to catch an Almaco Jack for dinner. Or actually, a couple because I'm going to smoke them. All right, I'll keep you. I'm sure someone will take it. Damn, pretty much swallowed it. Oh wow, I had him lassoed. Holy crap, how lucky is that? Unlucky for him, lucky for me. Uh, freedom! No freedom for you. All right, you get to die. Oof, what was that? Alright, gonna bleed them out real quick. Thumb just goes through and just rips through so you can put your fingers through and that'll get the blood flowing. Alright, that species is there. So for today's recipe, we're going to do a candied smoked tuna. So let's get started. Okay, let's turn this into candy. Check this out when I cut the stomach open. Look at that. Man. This dude was munching. He wiped out a whole colony of squid. Look at that. How many? Oh my gosh. Oh, then there's more. I think that's it. Oh, more. Look at that, that's all squid. The recipe for this is actually fairly easy. I've got a, the tuna sliced up into half inch thick, either uh, cutlets or I've got long strips. I kind of want to make it a little bit of a moist one and not go towards the jerky side. So that's why the little bit thicker. The brine I'm going to use is just a basic dry brine. Uh, I'm going to go one part of kosher salt. And if you've watched my smoked kingfish dip, I did a one-to-one -one mixture with uh, the brown sugar, but because I'm going for a more of a candied sweetened 
smoked fish. I'm going to go one part salt to three parts sugar, maybe even up to four parts. I'm going to basically taste it and uh, see what the flavor is. I don't want to go too salty because, like I said, this is a, a candied version. Uh, I'll also throw some pepper flakes towards the end. I actually might use some of the chili pepper flakes uh, just on some of them to give them a little bit of a heat. And then to actually sweeten it up and get that candied effects, I'm going to water down a little bit of honey and then use that to create a sort of a glaze. But that won't occur until after the smoking process is done. So let's do a quick mixture and get this all set up. So first off, let's start with making the dry brine. I'm basically going to do brown sugar and salt. It's pretty easy. Okay, so that's three parts sugar. And we're gonna go one part salt. I'm gonna start off with three parts versus three quarters salt, just to start that off. All right, let's mix this up. And you could basically vary the, uh, the amounts depending on the amount of fish that you have. Just remember either between one part salt to three part sugar or roughly one to four. Either way around there, you can just kind of make it to your own personal taste. Give that a little flavor. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we can go ahead and uh, start layering up the fish. That's all we had to do. For this, all we're gonna do is just put on a thin layer. Loosely in there. And then go another layer of our mixture. Then another layer. Okay, so that's not real jammed in there. Put our last little layer here. Okay. And then one last layer of our sugar salt mix. A bit much of the <laughs> salt sugar mix, but that's okay. The basic premise is the salt is going to extract the uh, juices out of the fish to kind of dry it out a bit. And then the sugar is going to tint it to give it a little bit of sweetness. And then that will also kind of firm it up a bit when the liquid's pulled out. So there we go. Now I'm just going to cover that, put that in the refrigerator, and then we'll go from there. So that is this first step. Since our candied smoke Tuna is going to take another half day to uh, brine. Um, in the meantime, I kept that nice slab of uh, tuna filet for doing some something with sashimi. So I figured I'd go ahead and do this quick recipe here. Uh, this is kind of a copied from Brooke Thomas. Uh, you could check out her YouTube channel. She's like a supermodel that fishes. Extremely pretty, but um, I still have better feet than her, though. 
But uh, anyways, she did a, uh, a avocado or wahoo wrapped in avocado type sashimi. So I'm going to do something similar with the tuna. So the first thing we're going to do is just hack up this uh, avocado. Next, I'm going to take my little uh, tuna filet here, and I'm going to cut a few strips off of it. Lay that in the middle. Okay, now we're going to attempt to wrap this. This looks kind of tricky here. So we're going to basically make a sushi roll. I'm going to add some sliced ginger just to get a little bit of kick to it. Okay, and then we're gonna try to attempt to roll this into a burrito or sushi, whichever you prefer. Maybe. Just maybe. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Easier said than done. Right, wrap that up so I can't squirt out. Then I mush it together. Sorta. Well, anyways. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to throw that in the refrigerator, chill it up. Hopefully it solidifies so I'm able to slice it. So we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, I'll go ahead and do some sashimi. All right, let's see if we can plate this thing. I think these avocados have to be a little bit softer. The ones I used were not quite ripe, so they're not sticking. But we'll see if we can make do. It just looks like poo, green wrap poo. But I might be able to cut it. Maybe I should have left the saran wrap on. Yeah, that's not going to come out very well. Let me do one more. Yeah, it's not sticking. <laughs> no, this is not going to work.
All right, so we're going to go to plan B. All right. Plan B. All right, we're going to try to salvage this mess, so let's get this. Fortunately, I had some uh, a lot of leftover stuff from uh, my Thai-style fish, so put that all in there. Then I've got some red onions, got some green onions chopped up fairly fine, got some red jalapenos. A little bit of spice, got some green jalapenos for more spice. A little bit of lemon, give it a little bit of tang. Then, got some coleslaw mix there. mix that up a bit with our tuna and under ripened avocados. Now that's good and mixed. Now we're going to go ahead and make a little bit of a sauce. Starting with some garlic. I always got to have my garlic. Going Asian with it, a little bit of uh, sesame oil. Whew, that's a lot. Soy sauce, get a little bit of salt. Throw some roasted sesame seeds. chunk of salt and a lot of pepper a lot of pepper all right I'm actually gonna add one little bit more ingredient just a dash of sugar give it a little bit of the sweetness mix that all up Add that to our mix. Mm, that sauce tastes great. Okay, I'm just gonna coat everything so it's nice, lightly coated. All right. Looking good. All right, we're gonna call today's dinner the Plan B. So uh, we went to a Asian style sashimi and avocado coleslaw. Got white rice, nori, sesame seeds. That'll match up pretty well with our standard sashimi. Some pickled ginger, wasabi, and then of course uh, it's been blowing this uh, all day today, so a few coconuts fell off the tree. So that's what we're going to use to wash it down. So that is our mid-video meal. Um, tomorrow we'll start smoking that tuna. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got. I've let this sit in the refrigerator. And as you can see, there's plenty of liquid's been pulled out of these fillets. Now I used a dry brine, which is basically uh, one part salt to three, three and a half parts brown sugar. And all that liquid is just coming out of, just being pulled out of the flays, primarily from the salt. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these out 
uh, give them a good wash, get rid of all that residual uh, salt and sugar. And then I'm going to lay them out on a drying rack and that's going to allow it to dry what's called a pellicle, which is that kind of a uh, pasty layer on the outer side. And what that does is it allows, it, it allows the uh, smoke to adhere to it and then that'll give that more rich smoke flavor. So let's go uh, wash these off and get them drying. Okay, we've got these guys all washed up and they're on a drying rack. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing the strips like that because they're easier to lay on these wire racks. The little cutlets I made, are they shrink down quite a bit, so it's going to be harder to make sure they stay up. But otherwise, I'm going to let these guys dry out uh, probably for an hour or two. Let that pellicle develop. It's that kind of a white, pasty shine to it. And then we can start smoking. I got them all set up on my smoking rack, so they're all ready to go. I uh, gave them a couple hours to dry, and uh, they're ready to go on the smoker. Got a nice bed of coals here, just doing a small little pile because I'm going to try to do more smoking than heat. So I'm just going to feed it just a few chunks of briquettes at a time just to keep it going, but primarily just a smoking process. And we do this for about three hours, maybe four hours if that. Here's my little smoke box. That's all it is. And put our fish on. Now we're getting some smoke. Woo! Smoke it. Okay, and the last thing I want to do is I'm going to coat these with a honey and water mixture. So I probably went about two parts honey, one part, one part water. Now uh, using some real hot water so it uh, mixes well. It's still kind of syrupy. And we're just gonna glaze those up a bit. We'll keep on smoking. Pulled off the rack, just letting it cool a little bit. Uh, that was about roughly four hours worth of smoking time, uh, very low heat, and about two box loads of cherry wood chips. So let this cool down just a little bit, then I'm gonna pull them off and put them on a plate so we can check, a, check them out a little bit more. I'll plate it up here, but I did actually did the uh, strips, you can see. And then I did these little cutlets. So I actually did them for a reason. I wanted to do a peppery style one. So on the cutlet ones, I've got crushed red peppers. And I'm going to just sprinkle on for a little bit of a heat to them. And then that uh, honey coating will uh, allow them to adhere fairly well. As well as I'm gonna hit them with some black pepper. Heavy on the pepper. Ooh, really can smell that. And this side I'll just leave plain. But anyways, that is the stuff. Originally I made this batch thinking that I would uh, share them with some friends and stuff, but I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> I've been picking at it little by little. We've got the sweetened Indian candied smoked uh, tuna, blackfin tuna. And then this side's got the same sweet, but then a little bit of heat involved with it. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. A good alternative way to do a black fin tuna since I go through quite a bit of it. And uh, 
this is all mine. So this is going to be my fishing treats for this week probably. So uh, anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. And before you go, let you check this out. Still kind of crumbly. Got a little bit of pepper flakes. Same with these. They're still pliable, so it's not all dried out. So nice and moist still. But uh, that's the good stuff.